I left a camera in the baby's room and found out my husband's shocking truth. The winter wind howled outside, shaking the windows and making the house creak. Inside, our suburban home was warm and quiet, but I couldn't shake the feeling that something was wrong. My husband, Daniel, had been acting strangely for weeks. He was distant, often lost in thought, and there was a mysterious edge to his behavior that I couldn't quite place. It was as if he was hiding something. As I sat alone in the living room, the baby monitor on the coffee table, crackling softly, a thought crossed my mind that would change everything. Little did I know, this seemingly ordinary evening would mark the beginning of a journey that would unravel our lives and uncover a mystery I never saw coming. Daniel, are you sure everything's okay? I asked one evening as he grabbed his coat and headed for the door. His eyes flickered with an emotion I couldn't quite place. Guilt, maybe. Fear. Just going out for a bit, Emma. Don't wait up, he replied, avoiding my gaze. This had become a common occurrence. He would leave at odd hours, returning late into the night with no explanation. Our conversations grew shorter, filled with tension and unspoken questions. I felt a growing chasm between us, and I was determined to find out why. One night, after another of Daniel's mysterious outings, I confided in my best friend, Sarah. Over coffee, I poured out my heart, expressing my fears and suspicions. Emma, you need to know what's going on, Sarah said, her voice firm. Have you thought about setting up a camera? It's not invasive if you need to protect yourself and find out the truth. I hesitated, the idea feeling both extreme and necessary, but the thought of not knowing was eating me alive. After much deliberation, I decided to take Sarah's advice. The next day, I bought a small, discreet camera and hid it in the baby's room, where Daniel spent most of his time with our daughter, Lily. A week went by, each day filled with a mix of anxiety and anticipation. Finally, one night when Daniel was out, I retrieved the camera and connected it to my laptop. My hands trembled as I pressed play, the screen filling with images of the baby's room. At first, there was nothing unusual. Daniel would come in, check on Lily, and leave. But then, on the fourth night, I saw something that made my blood run cold. Daniel was sitting in the rocking chair, holding a small, locked box. He glanced around, nervously before opening it and taking out a stack of papers and an old photograph. What are you doing, Daniel? I whispered to myself, my heart pounding. The next morning, as Daniel prepared breakfast, I decided to confront him. Daniel, can we talk? I've noticed you've been acting strangely lately. Is everything okay? He looked up, his eyes filled with an emotion I couldn't quite place. Fear, maybe. Everything's fine, Emma. Just been stressed at work. I took a deep breath, trying to keep my voice steady. I saw you with a box of papers last night. What's in them, Daniel? His face paled, and he dropped the spatula he was holding. You, you were spying on me. I had to, Daniel. You've been so secretive lately. What's going on? Tears filled his eyes, and he sank into a chair. Emma, it's not what you think. Please let me explain. Daniel's reaction only fueled my determination to uncover the truth. Then explain, Daniel. Because from what I saw, it looks like you're hiding something important. He took a deep breath, wiping away his tears. The papers, they're from my past. I didn't want to worry you, so I kept it a secret. His words left me speechless. A mix of relief and guilt washed over me, but a part of me still felt uneasy. Why didn't you tell me? I didn't want to burden you, Emma. You've been so wonderful with Lily, and I didn't want to add to your stress. Daniel's explanation seemed plausible, but something still felt off. I decided to dig deeper into his past. I researched the dates and locations mentioned in the papers. What I found only raised more questions. The dates matched events from Daniel's childhood, but there were gaps and inconsistencies. I needed more information, so I decided to follow Daniel the next time he left the house. One evening, he grabbed his coat and headed out, saying he needed some fresh air. I quietly followed him, keeping a safe distance. 
Daniel led me through the dark streets, finally stopping at a small, nondescript building on the edge of town. I watched as he entered, my mind racing with possibilities. What was he doing here? I waited for what felt like hours, the cold night air chilling me to the bone. Finally, Daniel emerged, looking more relaxed than I had seen him in weeks. I followed him back home, my mind reeling with questions. The next day, I couldn't contain my curiosity any longer. I returned to the building, posing as a concerned wife looking for information about her husband's visits. The receptionist was kind and understanding, but what she told me left me reeling. Your husband isn't a patient here, Mrs. Johnson, the receptionist said, checking her records. But he does volunteer here regularly. He's been a great help with our support group. Support group? I echoed, my heart pounding. What kind of support group? It's for people dealing with grief, she explained gently. Daniel has been very open about his own experiences and has been a pillar of strength for many here. Grief? My mind raced. Daniel had never mentioned any significant loss to me. I thanked the receptionist and left the building, my thoughts in turmoil. What had Daniel been through, and why hadn't he told me? That evening, as we sat down to dinner, I confronted him again. Daniel, I went to the building today. They told me you volunteer there for a grief support group. Why didn't you tell me? Daniel's face turned ashen, and he looked down at his plate. Emma, I'm so sorry. I should have told you. I was ashamed. Ashamed of what? I asked, my voice softening. Daniel took a deep breath. Before we met, I lost my younger brother in a car accident. It was devastating. The papers you saw, they're part of my therapy. I didn't want you to see me as weak. Tears filled my eyes as I listened to his story. Daniel, why didn't you trust me with this? I love you, no matter what. With the truth finally out, Daniel and I began to rebuild our relationship. He explained the details of his past struggles, and I realized the immense pressure he had been under. We sought counseling to help us navigate the trust issues that had developed, and slowly, we started to heal. It wasn't easy. There were days filled with anger and doubt, but we were committed to moving forward. Daniel continued his volunteer work at the support group, and I supported him every step of the way. The experience had changed us both, but it had also brought us closer. We decided to move to a new city, far from the memories of our past. Daniel found a new job, far removed from his volunteer work, and I focused on creating a stable and loving environment for our family. Together, we worked on healing, both individually and as a couple. The move was a fresh start, and it allowed us to rebuild our lives without the shadow of Daniel's past hanging over us. We made new friends and began to feel a sense of community again. The experience had changed us, but it had also made us stronger. Months passed, and life slowly began to feel normal again. Daniel and I found new ways to connect, and our relationship grew stronger with each passing day. The trust we had rebuilt was hard-earned, and it made our bond unbreakable. One day, as we sat in the park watching our daughter play, Daniel turned to me and took my hand. Thank you for standing by me, Emma. I know it wasn't easy, but your love and support got me through. I smiled, feeling a deep sense of gratitude. We're a team, Daniel. We always will be. As we moved forward, our experiences became a source of strength rather than fear. We shared our story with others, hoping to inspire those who were facing their own battles. Daniel became an advocate for mental health and support for those dealing with grief, using his experience to help others. Our family grew closer, and the love we had for each other deepened. We learned to cherish every moment, to never take anything for granted, and as we looked to the future, we did so with hope, knowing that we had faced our greatest fears and emerged stronger together. One evening, as we were putting Lily to bed, she handed me a small piece of paper she had found in one of her old toys. It was a note similar to the ones Daniel had used during his therapy. My heart raced as I unfolded it. Emma, if you're reading this, I want you to know that I never meant to hurt you. I was trying to protect you and our daughter. 
There are things about my past I can't explain, but I hope one day you'll understand. I love you both more than anything in this world. Daniel. I showed the note to Daniel, who looked at it with a mix of surprise and sadness. I must have hidden this during those dark days. I was so scared, Emma. Scared of losing you, scared of what might happen. Reading the note, I felt a wave of emotions. Anger, sadness, but most of all, love. Daniel had faced unimaginable challenges to protect us, and despite everything, we had come out stronger. Daniel, I said softly, we've been through so much, but we're here, together, and that's what matters. He nodded, tears in his eyes. We'll make the most of every day, Emma. We've been given a second chance, and I won't waste it. As we held each other, I knew that no matter what challenges lay ahead, we would face them together, with love and determination guiding our way. As we moved forward, our experiences became a source of strength rather than fear. We shared our story with others, hoping to inspire those who were facing their own battles. Daniel became an advocate for mental health and support for those dealing with grief, using his experience to help others. Our family grew closer, and the love we had for each other deepened. We learned to cherish every moment, to never take anything for granted. And as we looked to the future, we did so with hope, knowing that we had faced our greatest fears and emerged stronger together. Our story is a reminder that even in the darkest times, there is always hope. We may face trials and tribulations, but with love and determination, we can overcome anything. And as I hold Daniel and Lily close, I know that no matter what the future holds, we will face it together, with hope and love guiding our way. Months after the ordeal, we were finally able to put the past behind us. The traumatic experiences Daniel faced were acknowledged and addressed, and we were no longer living in fear. Our lives had been forever changed, but we were stronger for it. Daniel and I renewed our commitment to each other, vowing to never let anything come between us again. We focused on creating a loving and supportive environment for Lily, ensuring she would grow up feeling safe and cherished. Our story became a beacon of hope for others, showing that even in the face of adversity, love and determination can conquer all. And as we looked to the future, we did so with a renewed sense of hope and gratitude, knowing that we have faced our greatest fears and emerged stronger together. Our family was whole again, and we were ready to embrace the new chapter of our lives, confident that no matter what challenges lay ahead, we would face them together, with love and courage guiding our way.